Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. In this video, we are going to look into a very important topic. This topic might be unfamiliar to many of you. Many of you, many of you might be knowing this. Uh, what this Malassa Samuelson effect is. Um, but for most of you, I am very sure that this is a very new topic. So we are going to discuss this topic today. Uh, welcome back to Learn Economy. Let's move on. This effect is an arena, uh, this effect comes under the arena of uh, international economics. We know what international economics is. International economics deals with trade, international trade. Basically, it deals with exchange rate, it deals with export, import, how uh, different factors, factor endowment, the prices of factors, uh, the availability of factors, etc. leads to reduction in the home country and how it leads to trade in the uh, trade uh, trade uh, how it how it leads to trade how it helps in export how it helps in import uh, who uh, who will be benefiting out of uh, trade uh, how a particular country would benefit when it goes for trade how a particular country would be uh, benefiting when it goes for export uh, when it goes for imposing certain tariffs or quotas so all these are actually separate matters of um, international economics um, so this palasa samuelson effect 2 is something which comes under uh, the arena of international economics so without wasting much more uh, uh, time as well as effort because time and effort are very important no? So we are going directly to the topic, the Palasa Samuelson effect. This effect states that there are productivity differences across countries, and when there are productivity differences, the the productivity differences between production of tradable goods in different countries explain large observable differences in wages and the price of services and between purchasing power parity and currency exchange rate. This means that currencies of countries with higher productivity will appear to be undervalued. Undervalued means this will be given less value in terms of the exchange rate and this gap will increase with higher income. So what all are here? We have uh, difference in wages. That means factor payments. Factor payments in two different countries need to be compared. Then the price of services. Services the price of services what is that the price of serv um, services means the intangible goods right that is cannot that cannot be uh, that cannot be considered as a good it is actually service now uh, then currency exchange rate the uh, value of one currency with respect to the value of another currency and uh, this the, this is what we are we have to look into in simple words, we can see that an increase in wages in tradable goods sector of an emerging economy will lead to higher wages in non-tradable sector of the economy. So the, that is Palace Samuelson if, um, uh, effect is all about. That means an increase in wages in tradable goods sector. Tradable goods sector means tangible goods sector. If you are looking into an emerging economy like India, uh, the if, if wages of people or wages of labor in some tangible commodity in that particular sector if it is increasing this increase will lead to wages increase in wages in the non-tradable sector non-tradable sector means service sector that it's all about the, this particular uh samuelson effect tells the same only that means that when there is an increase in the wages uh, of the people who are involved in the tradable goods sector this will lead to increase in the wages of the people who are involved in the service sector as well that's it so the accompanying increase in prices would make inflation rate higher that means that there will be an increase in prices uh, and uh, this if you look the increase in prices for faster growing economies and slower growing economies you can see that the inflation rate would be uh, would be higher in the case of fast, faster growing economies compared to what is seen in the uh, slower growing economies okay so this effect explains the difference in prices as well as income across countries as a result of difference in productivity it explains exchange rate as well as purchasing power parity and also it will come it compares prices incomes etc across countries it means that optimal rate of inflation this would be higher for developing countries as they grew and raise their productivity 
okay inflation is something this is what india's experience you can see that inflation rate in india is growing day by day right so that means that uh, for developing countries uh, there would be more and more inflation but at the same time at the same time what we could see in india is that productivity is increasing right so the same thing is explained by the theorem so um, this theorem is proposed by balasa and samuelson bella balasa and paul samuelson it was in 1964 that this particular idea k uh, idea was introduced it identified productivity differences it identified uh, what to say uh, difference in prices difference in wages difference in purchasing power parity difference in exchange rates all these things differences are taken into consideration and these differences uh, were documented by using empirical data they have collected uh, data uh, and they have analyzed this data and according to this effect Uh, productivity growth differential between tradable and non tradable sector in different countries are different okay and high income countries these are uh, technologically advanced if you compare india with usa you can see that usa is a high income country it is more technologically advanced as well as it is productive now in case of you india if you compare the same with usa you can see that it is not that technologically advanced advanced and as a result the productivity of Uh, people as well as um, the country is very low compared to us so when i say productivity of india is low i am just making comparison with the us uh, in i am not telling this in absolute terms uh, because i can't tell so uh, when the productivity of india is growing we cannot tell that but relatively uh, we can see that the productivity of india is low compared to uh, the productivity of us so according to law of one price the prices of tradable goods should be equal across the countries right and uh, here i will be definitely explaining this law of one price in a uh, separate video uh, we can see that higher productivity in tradable goods will mean that real wages for workers uh, 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 workers uh, in that particular sector which will lead to higher relative price in uh, non tradable sector as well so in the case of long run productivity what we could see that there's a difference between high as well as long income countries in this particular effect or the balasa samuelson effect it suggests that the optimal inflation rate or the inflation rate for developing economy is higher than uh, developed economies why because developing economies uh, in the case of india itself you can see that the inflation rate is increasing but now the inflation rate is much more increased with respect to um, us uh, rather than in the case of india because of the problems caused in the global scenario that we know that is a special case but um, the developing economies we know that as a result of converge, uh, convergence hypothesis i think you are familiar with the convergence hypothesis so developing economy they will be growing faster Uh, the rate of growth might be faster compared to the developed economies and they will these countries uh, these economies might be in the would be converging okay so uh, we can see that people will be consuming more goods and well services as their wages increase so this is some uh, something which is common to both developed as well as developing economies the proportion of income that people spent on consumption when their income increases the proportion of income that people spend on consumption i'm not telling about the actual uh, amount that people set apart for consumption i'm telling about the proportion okay uh, so this will be increasing to an extent this would be increasing and after meeting all their consumption demand uh, when when there is an increase in income that would be saved so this is something which is told by keynes uh, the psychological law of consumption when we familiar with the psychological law of consumption that means that when income increases consumption increases but by a lesser amount is it so definitely consumption increases when income increases but by a lesser amount not all the increased income would be spent upon consumption if a part of it would be saved and we know that uh, an emerging economy is growing by raising its productivity and in developing economies productivity is already high we uh, we know the difference between growth and development emerging economies should concentrate upon growth as well as development whereas in the case of uh, developed economies these uh, they need not concentrate upon growth growth will come automatically there but they what they do is that they uh, concentrate upon development 
so that's all about today um, please like share and subscribe this channel for more videos and please be part of my telegram group and telegram channel to discuss your doubts i'll be providing the links of both my telegram channel as well as group telegram group in the description box that's all for today thank you